After the terrible tragedy of Shabtai Tzvi, the Chachamim, the rabbis of the generation, decreed that Kabbalah should not be studied until after a person is 40, Kuli Ha'eva even then, for it was the deep secrets of the Torah and the incredibly powerful words that can have a very, very great impact for good, or alternatively can have a very great impact for bad. Words of Torah are very powerful, as the Chazal tells us, the Gorma tells us, um, Sam. It could be a Sam Mavis or a Sam Chaim. Sam Teb. Sam Tam. Torah is a Sam Tam. It could be a elixir of life or elixir of death. The very same words of Torah that can give incredible healing could also bring a person to the lowest depths and take him very, very far down. So, in general, one's not supposed to reveal words of Kabbalah, but I feel there's some very powerful, a very powerful idea that we can express today, which can help people understand, get a greater appreciation of the mitzvahs of Salmatera, and therefore I'm going to reveal a tiny drop for the sake of coming to that clarity and understanding. One time I was walking with my Roshima, Roshi Kuchlowski, and I asked him the following question. How is it that you give these incredible share? You read the Rishonim, the Rambam, the Rajma, the Ritva, and you see things there that I look at I don't see the same thing. But after you would say the share, you would see that that's what I'm saying. He says, I read them 40, 50, 100 101 times, and then I see it. And that was the secret. Afterwards, I found out what she was saying is actually based, it's a Pasuk and Mishle. The Pasuk says, Im Labina Tikra. Im Labina Tikra. It's a Mishle um, base, Prag base, Pasuk Gimel. Kim Labina Tikra, Latfuna Titan Kola. In order to come to Bina and Tfuna, you need to read it and to call, enunciate it. And this is the secret, as it were, to unlocking the depth of the Torah, is to read the words. In fact, it's a big question in the postgame, right? When you just think the very Torah, right, do you make Birkin the Torah on that? Is it a mitzvah of Talmud Torah? To really fulfill the mitzvah properly, you have to enunciate the words, and some say it even in the Talmud, using the trump, if you're saying um, words of Tanakh. This is a very, very important critical idea, to read the words in this, but that's on a simple level. Right? But there's a much, much deeper level which I'm going to share with you now from the Arizal. But before that, we'll just add a, we'll ask a few questions, which should bother people, but like everything, doesn't really bother us until we see the answer and we say, why did that bother me? One question is, why does the state of Torah have uh, vowels? Right. Recently, a lot of a lot of books, a lot of stories are coming out with vowels. The kids of Shulchan Aruch and uh, this safer, that safer, of course, Chomashim uh, that people learn from their vowels. But the Sefer Torah doesn't have vowels. Or Tamim, for that reason. The notes. It's much easier. The Balkara spends hours and hours preparing, going over and over the Parsha. To learn the time and the vowel, the notes and the vowels by heart. Why do you need that? Why don't you just put them in? I know some discussion today about putting plastic over the um, over the uh, Saint Patera with the vowels and the and the drop on it. it hasn't been accepted, but why not? Why can't you do that? What's wrong with that? That's one idea. And then we we spoke about. The, the way to get the Bina and Tuna is by reading it. Why? Why does reading words, how does that unlock the depth of Torah by reading the words? Question number two. And question number three is that we find a concept, osios machakimais. If you can, even if you could say something by heart, but it's always good to read it inside the Sefer because there's a, there's a concept called osios machakimais. Reading the letters makes you more smart. Why is that? Yiddish to say, what's Tzuchach Dorin? What's going on? I'd like to share with you some very deep words, ideas here from Arizal. 
the Arizal here is in um, the Sefer Ochoz Chaim, Shar Nakuda and Kari Kari. He explains like this. He explains that we know in the world, in the world of Ruchnis, that there's two concepts, two major concepts. There's a concept called the Kali and there's a concept called Or. When Hashem created the world, He created the world was meant to be full of light, full of spiritual light. But to have spiritual light, you need a vessel to hold it. You need a vessel to hold the light. And Hashem created the world, the light was so great that the vessels being used to hold the light just broke. So this concept of old Shvira Sakalim, it's one of the most central ideas in Kabbalah, that the Kalim, that the utensils, that when Hashem filled the world with light, the utensils that were meant to hold the light were just not capable of holding the light. And therefore, um, they were all broke. Our job in this world primarily, says Arizal, is to fix those utensils, is to build utensils so we can hold light. And the more you build these utensils, the more light you will have in your life. That's that's Caleb, making Caleb. Right? So now says the Arizal that the light uh, is represented by the um, represented and actually actualized by the vowels and by the notes on letters. And this actually explains another idea of why they're target. <coughs> why are they target? Why are there crowns on the letters? Right, the Arizal says that these are antennas of sorts. These are um, connections of the letters to spiritual light, but the, the letters and the tagim don't have light of them to themselves. They're kale. They're vessels. How do we fill the letters with light? Right? We fill the letters with light by reading them with the proper vowels and the proper notes, um, proper tamim and proper nakudas. Right? And that's why when the Balkira reads the Kriya Tura, he's actually filling the kalim up with ore. He's filling these vessels up with spiritual light. And this is the importance of Kriya Satira and the Balkara and why the, the, the same Batara doesn't have notes or vowels because the notes and vowels are the lights. And the oaths, the letters and the crowns don't have light until themselves per se. They have to be filled up by the reading of the Torah, by the Balkara. And the same is true anytime someone learns Torah. When you read words of Torah, whether it be Chumash, whether it be Gemara, Mishnah, Medrash, any saint that you read, by reading the letters, by reading the words, and by pronouncing them, saying correctly the correct pronunciation, and if you're learning Tanakh, um, and you're capable of that by saying the um, proper trup, proper notes, so you're filling those letters up and letters and crowns up with light. And that's a very, very high level of, of Tikkun HaKel. Right? Again, when the world is created, the world was, is here to bring down Hashem's light into the world. And the Jewish people call the Or Amin, the light into the nations. Okay? And how do we bring the light into the world? The only way to bring the light into the world is through is through Caleb. It's through Caleb. The Caleb actually are a lower level of Hashem's light, but that's it discussion to itself. But we need to have Kalim, we need to have Or. So the letters and the, and the crowns are the Kalim, are the vessels. And reading it, when we read the Torah, when we read something over and over again, we read from a Sefer, right? Osios Machkimos, Im Labinatik, the Tunantitin Kalim. We say words of Torah, whether it be Chomish, Tanakh, Kumara, Mishnah, Rishon, Chronim, whatever Sefer we learn, by reading it, we're filling the letters up with light. And the more you fill the letters up with light, the more you'll understand. The more you'll go into your Neshama, your, your Ruach, which is in your heart, and your Neshama, which is in your mind. Right? You're doing an incredible thing. But if you just look at the Sefer like this, you know, but you don't read the words, so you're missing out a lot. So you're missing out on filling the letters with, with the infinite um, divine light. And the more you read it, and the more passionately you read it, 
and the more focused you read it, and the more kedush you read, meaning you said your Torah beforehand. You ask Hashem for siyat mishmaya, if you're zeichet to be at the kosel mravi here in the morning before before shacharis. Is of course there's a shechina here that definitely helps more and more. My close friend uh, Martin Gelber sent me yesterday a uh, radak in Tel Aviv, which says in Eretz Yisrael is the Makam Shechina, it's place of Shechina. Tell you in Eretz Yisrael, you're obviously connecting much more to that divine light. And Avira the Eretz Machim, breathing in the air of Eretz Yisrael, makes a person smarter. All these things help us to bring Hashem's light into this world. And this is our job. Our job as Jews is to be an Orla Amin, is to bring Hashem's divine light into the world. We could do that by reading Torah, by reading the words properly, by pronouncing them, and we can say the notes as well. And we're bringing the greatest, greatest light into the world. And this is an amazing, amazing concept. This is how we fill ourselves up with Hashem's divine light. This is how we fulfill the purpose of creation, which is to fix the Kalim. The Kalim broke because they were unable to hold the incredible divine light like this. And the Fidus, I believe we can understand the Gemara and Shabbos, not Kofdalit, right? The Gemara there asked, I believe it's Kofdalit, maybe Kofgimel. The Gemara there asked, no chukin min How do we know this concept of an acronym? Right? So it's Anochi. Anochi. The word Anochi stands for Aninashi Ksiva Yavis. I put myself into the writing of the Torah. Right? Hashem Kiva Yachol put himself into the words of Torah. He put his lights, his divine light, into the words of Torah. Right? Because the words of the Torah are the Kalim, and Hashem is the Or. He put himself in the Kalim. How do we get Hashem out as a world? How do we make a relationship and connect to that divine light which exists within the Torah? We connect to it by reading it. We connect to that by reading it. Ana Nashik Sibahavas. Says the Kadosh Baruch I put myself into the Torah, and you can take me out as a word. You could, you could access, you could connect to the divine light of Torah through reading it. So as we come to the month of El, a month filled with Hashem's light and the or of Tshuva coming back to Hashem, we should try to make Torah as much a part of our life as we can. And when you learn Torah, don't be satisfied just looking over the words quickly. Read the words pronounce the words, and do it with joy. Go over it many, many times. The Vilna Gon, when he would have a test to come into his yeshiva, he would ask the person, the um, potential candidate, to read over and over and over again. Read the words over and over and over again, because by reading the words, you connect to the divine life. And if you read the words a hundred times, with the same joy, then you were, you were you, you got entrance, you gained entrance into the world of Shiva. If they, after two or three times you're just frustrated, then the grass saw you. This wasn't who, the type of person he wanted. He wanted a person who really wanted to connect to Hashem's light. So we should all be Zoha to connect to this light. It's a very, very bright light for whoever is able to connect to it. And it doesn't just, the light doesn't just end with Torah study. It fills you up. I can t- tell you literally the G'daylam that I've been saying to me in their presence. Roshon Zahn Norbach, Roshon Bach, Roshon Well, Avdech HaMoshe Ben Tavar. These G'daylam, their faces literally shine with lights. If you would turn the light off in the room, you would see the divine light in the faces. And that's because they fill their neshamas up with so much Torah that their neshama is literally radiating light. How did they access, access this divine light? They're reading the Torah over and over again with joy and filling up the kalim, filling up the vessels, the letters of the tagim, right? And the tagim, the crowns, are, as it were, the antennas to bring that light down from above by reading this over and over again and by filling themselves up with this divine light. So we can all, not probably not going to be your Shalom Zahn Rabbah or Rav Moshe Sturmbach, but we all have the potential to access tremendous, tremendous divine light. Each one 
according to his shuk, his desire. And even a person who might be very small, but he can do things that are very, very big if he has the wealth. Right? As we said many times, the highest of the spheres is Kesser. Depending on a person's will, it's the level of divine light he can bring down to the world and bring his own neshama. And when you fill your neshama up with the Hashem's divine light, you'll be a different person. Your face will literally shine and glow with the or or Hashem. And this is what it says about Moshe Rabbeinu. Karen or Apana. Moshe Rabbeinu was so... Um, it doesn't mean horns. Moshe Rabbeinu didn't have horns. It means glow. Moshe Rabbeinu was so close to Hashem. He was so connected to Hashem's light. His face literally glowed with Hashem's light. He had to put a veil over his face because the light was so strong. So let's all fill our Nishamas up with Hashem's light. And next time you hear Kriya Satura and you're wondering why are there no why are there no vowels, why are there no um, why are there no um, notes, why um, what's the point of the Kriya Satura? What's the deeper meaning? Right? Why is it that by reading something we access it? Why is it osus machimos? The answer to all these questions is that this is the way that Hashem created the world. That we access the divine light of Hashem. The way to access which is the purpose of our being, is to bring Hashem to our life, or bring Hashem's light to our life. And the way to do that is either by reading to ourselves, and when we're listening to Kriya Satara, to access this divine light, which is coming down at this time. Every, this far I'm saying that every time Kriya Satara is my Menar Sinai, the Baal Terah is like Hashem himself, and he's filling up the vessels with light. So every time we listen to Kriya Satara, every time we read from the Sefer, Think about Hashem's divine light, which you bring it down to the world, because obviously the more intention you have, the more light comes down. And our lives will be filled, filled with Hashem's light. Even in the most dark circumstances, our lives will be filled with light. Hashem should help us in this extremely worthy endeavor. And of course, saying, all of these things help us to bring Hashem's light into the world. Hashem should help us. Bring the gula quickly. I meant to get to it.